So I'd like to know your thoughts on the importance of the teacher and the teacher's role. Um, in your book you speak a bit about uh, the importance of getting guidance, and, but I've also heard you in some of your talks talk of, you know, don't look for the perfect teacher, you know, work, work, look for a method that works for you. And, and then on a third hand, <laughs> we had three, uh, would be this work you do to train teachers which is one of the ways. So you have a, a you, you do a lot of work in terms of this process of teaching from a lot of different angles. And I'd like you to talk about the importance of having a teacher in one's practice. One of the, or probably the closest analogy for uh, spiritual practice is uh, music or the arts. And you can have very talented musicians, but they usually learn uh, to play better if they have a teacher. And of course, most of us, if we want to learn a musical instrument, really need a teacher. And I think the same is true for spiritual practice. Uh, there are people who have a natural talent for it, who are able to let the mind rest, let it open, uh, whatever you want. Uh, but most of us really need a, a teacher to show us how to do things. The, my whole thinking on teaching has been changing quite a bit, uh, but let's, let's start with the, the basic point. Whatever subject we study, whether it's uh, spiritual practice or music or mathematics or cooking, whoever we study with represents in some way what we want to learn. And if they don't, then why would we be studying with them? So <clears throat> in the spiritual practice, the teacher represents in some way what it means uh, to us to be awake or to know how to meditate. And so there's naturally a, uh, an appreciation, a respect that comes out of that. And that emotional connection is very, very important, uh, where there is a, a willingness on the part of the teacher to provide instruction and guidance, uh, and an openness based on respect and appreciation on the part of the student. And it's that emotional connection that makes teaching and learning possible. <coughs> uh, you're right. I've. Uh, given a lot of thought to teaching, and uh, I think one can break down the functions of a teacher into uh, three. Uh, first is to reveal or demonstrate or show the possibilities of being awake or present in one's life. They through their own example, you mean? It may be through their own example, or it may be through pointing out instructions, or mm -hmm. it, it can be done, but they, they reveal possibilities in some way. Second, uh, function of a teacher is to provide training in the skills and uh, how to build the capacities that are necessary in spiritual practice. And the third is to uh, point out the internal material in the student that gets in the way, you know, reactions. Call emotion. you on your stuff. Call you on your stuff, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yes, sir. So now, I'm not sure that those all three have to be in the same person. Conceivably, you could have three different teachers. Uh, and, uh, but uh, very often, there, you, you'll have one teacher who will serve all, uh, all three functions. And that, that's, that's what one's looking for in, in, in a teacher. But lately, I've been putting much more emphasis <coughs> on uh, creating learning environments where people can learn. Because one of the things we do in the West is uh, we learn from each other. Uh, we, uh, and our educational system is based on that. And that wasn't the case so much in uh, Asian cultures. Uh, wh what do you mean when you say we learn from each other? You mean the students learning from each other? Yes, very much. Okay. Because uh, they, they talk about things and say, well, this is how I experienced it, or this is uh -huh. how I understood it. And there's a whole uh, peer relationship which actually gives rise to a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. uh, which is often overlooked. And I found it very, very helpful in... Uh, and also questions. Someone might ask a question you wouldn't have even thought to formulate. Or, the, yeah, uh, you're quite right. 
or they, they will look at things completely differently and you think, gee, I've, I never considered it from that point mm -hmm. of view. So it tends to round things out a lot. And so in retreats and workshops, I usually create uh, situations where people are going to be talking about their experience with each other and learning that way. So they aren't solely dependent on everything coming from the teacher. I think that's important. Right. I, you know, it's interesting. I, I think about that sometimes, I know, in a class I'm teaching where I like the idea that everyone isn't still just always listening to the sound of my voice. <laughs> they're, they're hearing it, you know, from somebody else, or if somebody else even confirms something, it's like they get to hear it from two uh, sources, maybe even the same thing formulated slightly differently. There's an exercise I do if I'm uh, in relatively small groups, up to about 15 or 16 people. That is have everybody sit in a circle and uh, put an object in the center of the room. And I'll usually start it off by posing a question. And then one person will go, pick up the object, come back, and answer that question. Then they'll put the object back in the center. And when they're ready, they will go and pick up the object a second time, come back to their place, and then pose in a second question. And then we'll go around this process one by one. And I've done this several times when this, the, the topic has been um, death and impermanence, which, as you know, is a big uh, topic in Buddhism. Yeah. And people are astonished at, because everybody's listening. Nobody knows what question they're going to get. Everybody has to be paying full attention. Oh, I, I was trying to think of what, what you were accomplishing here. So it's getting people to listen. And really listen deeply. And people are astonished at how much wisdom comes out of all of the peers, all mm -hmm. of, the, uh, all of their uh, colleagues. Right. And so they begin to see that wisdom is a function of attention rather than something that you get from a teacher. Also interesting of how it develops this appreciation Definitely. that you were just yeah. talking about. Cool.